number one has to be the Great Pyramids. They are amazing. Crew, we're heading to the pyramids. Yeah, these pyramids are amazing. Crazy steep stairs, two sets of them. It feels like you can't breathe. There's no oxygen and there's no air and it's hot and it's worth every step. and it is amazing check this out Ooh, look how big that is it is huge it is very active here it's busy today and we got lots of horses and camels around let's go check it out close up yeah. <laughs> Towards the top of the Great Pyramid. Which this is one long freaking ass journey up. It is 6 a.m. in Giza, and we are gonna do some. Ah, there's dog! I'm up. We're gonna go do some ATV riding out there. Out there in the desert by the pyramids. Let's go. I'm assuming it's probably fair to say you've probably dreamed of seeing the pyramids, you've wanted to go, but did you ever think you might get to go quadding with the pyramids in the background? I hope this is inspiring to you. I hope maybe you're going and this, you're going to use this to choose what to do. Either way, take the minute, hit that like button so that we get some love from YouTube and we can keep making these videos for you. Here we are at the pyramids. The Pyramid Lookout location. Number two in our not in a specific order list is Karnak Temple, which is huge and I almost said amazing again. Let's not say amazing. It's just you got to see this. Let's go. Okay, have a good day. Thank you. It is morning here in Luxor, it's about 6 a.m. and we have a beautiful sunrise over the Karnak Temple. We are the first people here. Yes. So definitely Mickey style. <laughs> get up early, get here before all the people and uh, we're going to get some amazing shots uh, with the temple and the sun. So um, let's go check it out and uh, we'll also show you the prices because the prices do change um, you know, occasionally. So we'll show you the entrance price tickets, but uh, let's check this out. Look at that sunrise. It's pretty amazing. It is. Is it worth getting up at uh, 4 or 40 yeah. in the morning or whatever it 440. is? 4 40. Yes. Yes, definitely Cause, worth it. Because we now go to sleep like babies at 9 o'clock. <laughs> like little children at 9 o'clock. We're old people. Maybe we're old people now. No. We are here at Karnak Temple. It is about 6 a.m. The sun just came up. It is amazing. We're going to explore the temple and uh, show you everything. The price of tickets is $150 per person, Egyptian dollars. So uh, it is very well priced. And if you can, get here early in the morning to watch the sunrise. It comes up right behind the temple. It's amazing. And if you want to be the first one here, you need to be earlier than her. <laughs> Which was five o'clock. We left. So yeah, you gotta leave it like. If you want to be first, you gotta be here. F leave it five yeah. from your hotel. If you want to talk about moments in your life, experiences, the whole reason we travel, just look at this. Take it in. Feel it. Look at the size of this structure. These columns, they're like four thousand years old. This is what, Sunapapchu? 
Oh, stepson. Amazing in here. Look at those amazing colors. And all preserved with the main ingredient being egg white. Five names, but the two in the cartridges is one coronation name and one birth name. This one is a coronation name. Okay, coronation name. Because it's the son of? And the sun disk. So Sa Ra is the son of the god Ra. Okay. And his birth name is Ramesses, or what we can pronounce in English, Ramesses. And graffiti artist from 1893. Let's roll number three here. We'll show a little diversity because this temple, Hachitsu Temple, is about a queen, not a king. This is Anubis. This is Anubis in the background. And we have our friend in the back. Pat Cheapsuit Temple. It is amazing and wonderful and definitely worth a stop. Come see it. From the little train. So we are now here at Pat Cheapsuit. Hachitsu's temple. Hachitsu. I know, you say it really slow. And you have a little cafeteria behind you. And at all of these temples and all of the sites, there are bathrooms, washrooms, toilets, whatever you want to call them, in your, wherever you're looking at it from. And uh, you give them a couple of pounds, a couple of Egyptian pounds to use it, and they give you some toilet paper. Just so you know. Definitely impressive. The only Sphinx that's left that used to line this row. Look at this place. You even see pink, like a pinky, orange, red, different changes colors depending on where you're standing. I'm playing photographer. <laughs> I'm so sorry to bother you. That one was amazing. That one there? That, that one. one. There. Yep. It's all cool. All the Super colors cool. at the back. You have to go to the third level. Make sure and go all the way to the back. Yeah. And see the colors. Oh no, and there's colors on the second floor too. And uh, just so you clear, Nicole thinks you should do like Rocky style running up the stairs in the blistering heat and sun. Yes. Yeah. That'd exactly. Be, that'd be good for your vacation. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, the Valley of the Kings, which is, I'll go with epic this time. It is epic. This is the Valley of the Kings, one of the most amazing places to go and see in Egypt. You have to go to this one. I know it's on a top 10 list, but this is one you have to go to. The tombs are amazing. It is impossible so hard to believe that this stuff is still here after thousands and thousands of years it's crazy and cool go in our video which i'll include a link above we include all kinds of details how much the tickets are what you should bring what you can bring what you can't bring you should definitely check it out if you are considering this at all and you better be because you really need to do this one Welcome to the Tomb of Tutankhamun. You're not allowed to shoot video in most of these tombs. We were able to work out other arrangements, which is why you've seen some of the great video. If you'd like to know how, feel free to comment below. But these photos are actually from in Tutankhamun's tomb. You're not supposed to have these, but here he is. Here's the man right here, Tutankhamun. This tomb here, shh, is a very secret, no photography, no videography zone. So the names and faces of certain people have been changed to protect their identity. But again, another amazing tomb, just 
You could just stand there for hours and look at this, and it is just awe-inspiring. What from? It's huge. Oh, well, yeah, but Thank you. It's That's smooth. huge. Beautiful. 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 Okay. Here. Ah. Oh, okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay. This is good here. Oh yes, this is good here. Oh, that's awesome. 100 meters. 100 meters. Make sure you got your walking shoes on. It'll be interesting to see what happens because it's got a really crazy effect. And all the way up the stairs are all these beautiful writing and paintings. We are the last ones at Valley of the Kinks. Why am I not surprised? For number five, we're gonna take a step away from the ancient monuments and talk about Cairo. And in particular, they have such a vibrant street market there. You have to go see that if you're in the Cairo area. This video is going to include three unique destinations in the heart of Cairo, which can sometimes be intimidating for tourists. We want to share our experience with you so you know what to expect and can feel confident when you go to visit. To protect pedestrians from this crazy traffic you see here, they build tunnels underneath the roadway. But the local people, they don't want to walk under the tunnel, which we'll show you a little later. Instead, they cut a hole in the fence and they're lined up in the middle of the street, cutting through the fence and then dodging the traffic to cross the street. It is crazy and bizarre and that kind of the fun of Cairo though. People ask us over and over again, how are the people in Egypt? How are the people in Cairo? And this is a perfect example. They're just friendly, they're great. They, you know, he doesn't like the horn honking, but uh, once he figured out what's going on, he's like, oh, this is so cool, hi. You know, they're waving to the camera. Great people, friendly people. You should go and visit these people. It is an amazing experience. That's right, we're introducing a new character to our video, a special guest who is here in Cairo with us, who is now instantly becoming a star. All right, so she's now done posing for selfies, and let's get into the heart of the Kahan El Kahili, Bazaar, which is in the center of Cairo. This is the more touristy area. Locals definitely do shop here, but you know, this is where the tourists go. And just a little history of it. Obviously, it's been here forever. There have been a couple very serious terrorist things which have gone on in years past. It's very secure now and fine. We had no issues whatsoever. Just wander around, wander into these shops, you know, these local store owners. Some of this stuff oh, is unique craft right. stuff that's made there. Some of it's clearly probably made in China and brought in, but it's just such an amazing experience. As you'll see, while we are the tourists and this is a touristy area, there are more locals here than there are tourists. It's a great place, I'm sure, for them to hang out and come have some tea and a little party in the middle of the day. Thank you, just sharing a little, a little love and prank. Oh, okay. Sorry. We're working on trying to find postcards. Those look better with the lights. 
Oh, those are pretty. All right, while we switch to the next location, please take a moment, click that like button for us, and maybe comment. Do you found this stuff interesting, or have you been someplace like this before? Yeah, I want you to tell me that. We're going to quickly tour one of the three remaining gates from the wall that used to be around Old Cairo. The gate is called the Babzuela. Babzuela. Okay. Okay, they took away our little vlogging camera, but let us keep our big Canon professional cameras. So as I said before, we're now on the roof of one of the original gates overlooking the bazaar and neighboring city. say Cairo from above is a little rough. Definitely quite dirty, the rooftop. So let's give you a little look. It's like, oh, it's like more run down, falling apart dirty. Not like, not like China dirty, where like everything was just right, smoggy yeah. and dirty. This is like falling apart poor dirty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Leave the skatehouse and get back into the streets of Cairo. Look at this. It is so cool. Stick with us for another two minutes and let's take a look off the beaten path and look at what the local market looks like. Okay, none of us have scooters in our market. None of us have minivans going through the market either, but maybe we should change the rules here in the United States. You know, dodge a couple minivans while you're shopping. It's a little trafficy here, but nothing bad. And this guy, again, another local guy, looked totally happy, totally cool with us. And how interesting is this guy just sitting there shining shoes on the side of the road? And she's like, see, she's like selling the outfits. It's kind of, yeah. Okay, I had to slow this down to add my own thoughts. Look at these costumes. This woman, the super conservative woman, is selling lingerie that would be completely good in the Victoria's Secret lingerie show. Number six is very straightforward. It is the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Ooh, look, look at that. It is huge. Huge. It is amazing. They that looks have, amazing. <laughs> they have so many things to see. It's 300 Egyptian pounds each to get in, which includes the mummy room. So you um, can reduce the price if you don't want to go into the mummy room. Don't do that. No, it, you definitely want to see it. It's super cool. A lot of the major queens and kings are in the mummy room. There's a King Tut room that you can see all of his gold and his yeah. mask. The, um, it, if you want to take pictures in his room, it's actually 500 Egyptian pounds. Don't do that. And you, but you don't know that until you get there. Yeah, so you can know that ahead of time. It's 50 Egyptian pounds if you want to take um, pictures in the museum. Do that. Yeah, it's awesome. And um, what else can we tell you? It is it not is as dark as they say. Not as dark and not as random. It's really quite organized. I mean, it is certainly not like going to the Smithsonian style organized but it is not the mayhem that everybody said it was with just stuff strewn everywhere. Right. It's most really things, pretty, like, a museum. Yeah, and most things have descriptions next to them, in front of them. If you don't see descriptions, it's because they don't know what it is either. They've found so many things that, you know, some things just aren't labeled, but most things are. And you will be astonished at how much is here. So come and check out the Egyptian Museum. Do it. Tickets, tickets in front and to the right. That's amazing. Holy moly. This is crazy amazing. Look at all these things in here. 
It's crazy amazing. Who's this guy? Who are these guys? Who's this one? Tons of guys. I, he's showing I, you. There's he's an showing egg. You 10, there's eggs right. on the wall. He's showing you all. Oh my god, who's this guy? All the important guys. Here we are at the world famous Egyptian museum. You'll see lots of comments online about it being kind of like just tons of stuff without a whole lot of organization. We really didn't find it that way. It was great. It's an awesome museum. They've built a new one. It's not quite open yet. They're having like soft openings and stuff like that. Either one, you should definitely go. Oh, and you should also hit like right now. Please pronounce that name. Oh, it's got Prince. Now do it at a normal speed, not a. <laughs> Lucky number seven would be sailing on the Nile on a felucca and going to a traditional Nubian village. It was amazing. It is morning here in Aswan. It's about uh, 7 a.m. and we're gonna go and meet our driver at the other side from Elefante Island is where we're at at the move and pick. We're heading to the other side and today we're gonna explore Aswan. So stick with us. We're gonna show you what you can get done and what you can see in a day and we'll share with you all of the information. Luca. The Ziggy? Nubian Faluka, yes. Nubian Faluka. Yeah. And Wheezy. I almost said Iggy. <laughs> and Wheezy. <laughs> we have started our Faluka adventure. We're going to go sail around for like an hour and a half and then check out a couple Nubian villages. And you will be happy. And we will be happy. Ziggy says we're going to be happy. Here we are on our Faluka. Hey, we got Captain and First Mate doing a great job. Yes, thank you. Yes. We love America. We are going to lose it. <laughs> now it's over here. See, I have a new pointer. Camels, camels. We are going to go ride a camel from the beach over to the Nubian village. Yes, where our felucca will wait. For us, yes. For us. This should look familiar. This would be a stick person negotiation in process, followed by a camel photo shoot. <laughs> Sorry, girl. Ah. Okay. okay, this is Elephant Teal Island. We're gonna take these camels and ride to the Nubian village. This is such an experience. We are so lucky that we get to travel and experience these things. This is why we bring it to you because not everybody can go to Egypt, but this is an amazing thing that just you have to see, you have to experience, you have to go and do this. Can you imagine riding a camel through a Nubian village in Egypt? It was awesome. Okay, we're, we're at Elefante Island after taking a great felucca ride. Now we're going to go have lunch, dinner with the felucca owner, the guy who owns the, the felucca. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Another walk in the plank I did. 
So we are on Elefante Island and we are going to the Feluca Captain's um, home for lunch. So it'll be a really nice experience to uh, have lunch in one of the locals' homes. Nice, let's do it. Okay. Thanks, thank you guys. so much, guys. Hi, thank you. Lunch, yes? Yes. After lunch, I go around with you. What do you want in the in island? Okay. Any place. Awesome. Come on, welcome. Ah, thank you. That's so nice. Okay. Ah. So we are in the home of the Felucia captain. We had two young guys who were uh, captaining the boat on behalf of the owner and main captain. And now we're gonna enjoy some lunch in his home, yep. which is really cool. Excited about it. Yeah, yeah, totally. Should be cool. Number eight is Abu Simbo, which is definitely worth the little extra trip to get there. How cool and amazing and awesome and overwhelming is Abu Simbo. We are in Abu Simbel and we're gonna see the temple today. I'm assuming when we come around the corner we're gonna see this magnificent temple. I'm getting good at walking backwards. I'm looking at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> wow! That's incredible. Which one is the camera ticket? So you guys know the fees? 300 for a photo pass, 200 per person entrance. Zillion hallways in here. Wow. I am B.O. on Overwhelmed. This is amazing. Totally and utterly, totally and utterly amazing. It is crazy huge. As you can see, we look minuscule next to it. I am blown away yeah, at how amazing. amazing this is. Just north here of the main temple is a smaller one dedicated to Nefertari. That was actually King Ramses II's favorite queen. These magnificent statues are 35 feet tall and they are of the king and queen. We have one photography pass. So the photographer <laughs> is also the camera mule. Because I can't go in with my camera and I don't want to put that whole thing away. So come on, donkey, let's, let's go. go. For number nine, we're going to say you have to eat some of the traditional food in Egypt. Here are three of our favorites. In this video, we're going to share three unique dining experiences only to be had in Cairo. Obviously right here we're eating the famous stuffed pigeon. We're going to take you to a local kosheri restaurant. We are going to take you to a tea house which is open 24 hours a day, 12 months a year, since it opened in 1773. One of the 15 oldest tea houses in the world. Let's go do it. Kosheri! Maybe yeah, we'll sit here. There, ah, oh, okay. Okay, so back, you gotta come up here. It's a whole process. Take noodles. It's like noodles, rice. Back 
He's so fast. No, you do sauce first. Sauce first. No. Sauce is separate. Let's go eat some koshery. Koshery. Oh yeah, sauce is good, back. Sauce is good. We're now walking up and getting ready to sit at a tea house which has been open since the 1700s. How cool is that? A little flavor of this is you're sitting here on the street and lots of vendors and beggars come by. We're gonna include a little of that so you know what it's like, but what a great thing to do when you're in Cairo. So we are in the oldest tea house in Cairo. Is your name for Egyptian Okay, just like Yeah, that. Do you like a beer? No, thank you. Do you need tasbih Egyptian? Egyptian. Tissues. No, 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 no. No, it's okay. Number 10, the final one on our list was a Nile cruise. We cruised from Aswan to Cairo, and it was so cool. Check this out. Welcome to Doug and Nikki. We're here on the roof of the Royal Lily, cruising down the Nile. We're going to give you the full run of this ship because, as Nicole will tell you, it's very hard to find information about it, so we want to bring that kind of information to you guys. With the beautiful Egypt behind us. It is a little windy, um, but we're on our way to Luxor, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one we're going on, number three. Heading through the first boat to get to the third boat. Get to the Royal Lily. Thank you. Okay. I will go Thank because the, the best girl on. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Welcome. Two. Hi. Japanese door. Glass door. Heavy. And then for the bathroom, it's actually a very good sized bathroom. So we actually had ordered a king, I think they got the message wrong. So they put the two um, twins together, which a lot of kings are made like that in hotels and stuff. And so they're going to remake the beds. And st so it is breakfast time on the Move and Pick Royal Lily. We're going to show you what they have. Um, main thing is a little egg omelet station and um, and then some other little pastries and things um, not a lot of options but uh, anyway so let's show you what? quick preview of our video covering the temple of Kom Ambo which is a temple dedicated to the crocodile god it is really amazing hey just put a comment below if you've seen it if not we'll include a link above so that you could go check it out thanks so we are headed down for lunch. It is <laughs> it is one o'clock, and lunch is served from 12:30 to 1:30. So we're gonna show you <laughs> what lunch service is like. Look at this door. Like this is the door, the gateway for like Optimus Prime to go through. This is the quick preview of our second stop on this Nile cruise, Efu Temple, which was unbelievable. It is giant, the second largest temple in Egypt. Uh, there's a link up above if you want to go check out this video. Enjoy it.
So we just got back to the boat. And another little nice added touch that they have is when you get back to the boat, they have um, some snacks and stuff. Ooh, they have bananas. Ooh, <laughs> I'm falling out. But they have bananas foster that they're making, which is awesome. They have these nice little treats. Our final breakfast aboard the Moonpick Royal Lily. We've had an amazing time. The staff is top notch. Um, service, amazing. Okay, I couldn't deal. I couldn't deal. I couldn't do 10. I have included three additional amazing locations, which actually amount to four different temples. Um, enjoy them. Think about visiting them. And again, comment below if you guys have any questions. So we are here at the Hilton in Luxor and we are ready to um, head out. Today we are going to do a full day tour. It's a tour that not many people go to. Um, there are two absolutely amazing temples. These are our two stops today. Dendiros and Abydos. So both temples are supposed to be in superb condition and also the writing and colors on the wall are supposed to be the best. So it is definitely a long ride from Luxor. It's going to take us three and a half, four hours. So it is a very long day, which is why I think a lot of people don't do this tour. But we um, we have our driver and it's our... hours in the van. Yes, today. seven hours in the van today. So it's a long time, but we are told that it's supposed to be amazing. So we have our driver and our trusty guide with us and they are going to take us on our adventure today. So let's hit the road. We've made it to the Dendera Temple Complex. It is? Second century BC a Greek temple to Hathor, the cow goddess. Okay, let's go check it out. We are in Abydos Temple, four hours from Luxor, headed north, and we are going to go check it out. This temple was built by the King Cities I and his son, the King Ramses the Great, in the 13th century BC. This is one of the storage rooms and probably one of the best preserved and intact carvings and paint that you will see. It's amazing to see all the faces. Everything is perfect looking. It looks like everything in here looks like it was done yesterday. It is amazing in here. Yeah, except it was done 3,000 years ago. 3,000 years ago. Four? Four. 3,300. Okay, 3, you tell us. Hold on, okay. <laughs> you tell us this room. Yeah, the, you know, you yeah. fill us in on the this whole, room. The whole temple was built around the 13th century BC. Here's my tip for the Luxor Temple. It is not busy yet. There's only one tour bus here. Most of the tours go to Karnak first. So if you're not in a tour group, go to Karnak first thing early in the morning. And by the time you're done, all of the tour buses are arriving and it's packed with people. And then you come over to the Luxor Temple and there's nobody here. So that's the plan and that's what you should do. Now let's go check out the Luxor Temple. The Sphinx that they found. Wow. That is awesome. The obelisk that was here is now in France. Welcome to another episode of Let's Use Six Foot Tall Doug as a Measuring Device for a Large Statue. This kind of capitals are called Corinthian capitals. Corinthian capitals. And the Roman also closed the temple at this spot, before the end of the temple during this time, that time. 
they both the four figures of Justinian, the Roman Emperor, and right. his father, his grandfather, his great ancestor, and they put four statues over here, but the statues were lost. Oh wow, so this door wasn't there, like yeah. this was all was closed off. Way, closed off and they used the rest of the temple as a storage. Oh storage. wow. And this room they used as storage. Okay. In the Ministry of Antiquities, this guy is doing his job right now. So now we are watching the conservation work of these walls. If you imagine, if you look at this kind of wall or part of the color. Yeah. Right. If you look at it, you cannot even imagine the original colors are still there. They yes. This there. Right. Yeah. But the archaeologists have just discovered that if they use some kind of chemical materials, particular chemical materials, you can discover the original colors and they already did. Really? Look here you can see the blue, the turquoise, the red colors, the beautiful colors dates back to the 14th century BC, the time of building the temple. 3,400 years back. All the We've got to run. Lots more temples to see, cool places in Egypt, but make sure you click that subscribe button, like this video, and comment below if you've uh, liked it and it's been helpful for you. We hope that this makes your travel more enjoyable because you'll know what to expect when you go. Here we are in Saqqara, and we're gonna go check out a few of the pyramids and we'll show you what we see here. Very it's, cool. Uh, the tickets to get in are 300 per person and includes the entrance to Titi's um, tomb as well. first pyramid, the first big great pyramid, which is some 5,000 years old, let's call it around numbers, from 2900 BC. Because it's the first one, they weren't so good at building it, so it's kind of collapsing a little bit on, onto itself. Called the and Step little, Pyramid. Yeah, and a little, uh, little rough around the edges, but uh, a little later we're going to see the Great Pyramids, which are in amazing condition. Yes. These are all bulls. I don't yes. Abyss. Abyss bulls. Oh, look at how huge. How thick is a bull? That is granite. That is amazing. Tomb for uh, Abyss bulls. For the bulls. It started from Amunhotep um, first. Yes, and the last one, the last Abyss bull from uh, Sirte Dynasty. Because after the early Christianity, it's not allowed for anyone to put it any bulls here. What does it mean Serapis? Serapis mix between Serapium, Serapis in Greece, and the Apis pole, and Atom. It's hard to describe. I think there's one we get to stand next to. But yeah, it's hard to imagine even with modern tools how you would move that. Right, here we are in Saqqara next to the sarcophagus of a bull, which obviously is much taller than even I am at 6'2", and weighs a hundred tons. Amazing. Amazing, and it's got hieroglyphs all along the side and down the Super front. Super cool. 